Hello and welcome to the 45th episode of Fresh Off The Reel. My name is Lib. And my name is Pat. I don't have a bit for this one. We're just going into it. You haven't had bits for a while. I had a bit last time. You did. But that was because that was, that was uh, that was, last time was different. <laughs> I'll, ha- I'll have a bit for the next one, maybe. We'll see. Is that a promise? No. <laughs> well, okay, well, you're going to have to tune in to check. But today we're going to be talking <laughs> about the third movie in the Cornetto trilogy. We're finally finishing it. When did we start that, this? This is the second marathon we're finishing, technically. Yeah, it is. Gee, oh, wow. We're two for two, two in a row. Two in a row, actually two in a row. Uh, we started great. We started this, uh, the first ever Spooktober. It was the first movie. Yeah, the first Spooktober movie was Shaun of the Dead. And last season, we talked about Hot Fuzz. And it's only fitting that for season three, we finish this trilogy with the world's end. I mean, hopefully we also go beyond this trilogy <laughs> for the said director, because he's, <laughs> he's, a, he's a director we both enjoy. Edgar Wright, but yeah, we're we're here. Yeah, and actually, as of as of me watching The World's End, I have seen every Edgar Wright movie. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cause um, Lib had not seen this one before we planned this episode, and and uh, we watched it together a couple days ago. It was really fun. This movie's really good. <laughs> it's it's a fun one. I, I liked it more this rewatch than I did the first time. Not to say I didn't like it the first time, but we'll we'll get into that later. Yeah. Well, let's talk cinema. So, uh, The World's End, uh, like I said before, third movie in the Cornetto trilogy, the final movie. This is the mint-flavored one. Cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this came out in 2013. So, let's read the plot synopsis here. This is from Letterboxd. Good food, fine ales, and total annihilation. Five friends who reunite in an attempt to... St- to top their epic pub brawl from 20 years earlier, unwittingly become humankind's only hope for survival. And that's it. It's it's important to keep the description of this movie vague, because there's a lot of surprises here. Yeah, I feel like the less you know about this one going into it, the better. Like, um, I mean, we're we're getting into it, so spoilers ahead if you haven't seen The World's End. But uh, Lib, did you see that that twist coming? <laughs> or did you think it would just be a bar hopping movie with a couple buddies reliving their past? Well, I, I knew something had to happen because I read this it's, before we watched it's also, it. Uh, it's also an Edgar Wright movie. So. Yeah, it's also an Edgar Wright movie. But like, I read, I read this and I was like, uh, humankind's only hope for survival. I was like, okay. I was not expecting aliens, but uh, in, in the back of my mind, I kind of was... <laughs> I didn't see this one coming. I mean, I saw this movie, like, a long time ago. Like, around when it came out. I didn't see it in theaters, though. Um, so I did not see that twist coming. Probably should have. I, I think the only Edgar Wright movie that plays it straight is, um, is Baby Driver. <laughs> or at least of his big movies. Baby, Baby Driver plays it pretty, pretty straight. I mean, Sha- Shaun of the Dead plays it pretty straight, too. But if you ignore the fact that it's about zombies... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it plays it straight for a zombie movie, but it's still a zombie movie, right? Yeah. Like, compared to, like... Like, Baby Driver is really, really just, like, a... It's a, it's a fun heist movie, right? Yeah. But all his other movies are, are, are wacky and zany. Like, Last Night in Soho, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. Um, have you seen that one? Yeah, you I recommended it to me. Oh, right, yes. I forgot. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll get to Last Night in Soho at some point. That one, that one's weird. And then obviously, like, the Cornell trilogy is weird. Scott Pilgrim speaks for itself. <laughs> uh, again, we'll probably get to that at some point. But, uh, th- uh, like, um, Baby Driver plays it, like, really straight. And then you, you kind of think this one's playing it straight at first, because it really does just feel like, um, like, this, like, um, some movie about a, a, a group of friends kind of reuniting and maybe kind of under the main character realizing that, uh, Things have changed, you know? But no, it's uh, it's an apocalypse movie. <laughs> it's an apocalypse movie. The The setup for this movie is is really funny. It's really good. Uh, so the, the there's this group of five... Yeah, the group of five friends. Yeah, the five musketeers. The five musketeers. Uh, it's, Actually, uh, it, it's, uh, it's kind of funny because they, they, they call themselves the five musketeers at the beginning. And I, I forget which one, but someone calls it, like, it's not the five musketeers. It's supposed to be the three musketeers. And then we get to the end. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that there for now, but it's it's funny how that comes back later. 
So the five friends we got to uh, Gary King, played by Simon Pegg, the genius. <laughs> yeah, he's like the group the, the group leader. If you see like any like eighties like like the Breakfast Club or, or Ferris Bueller, he's he's that guy, you know, in the friend group. He's the leader. Yeah, he's the cool one. He gets all the girls. He does all the. The alcohol and the drugs and he's just he's <laughs> super he's just super cool man he's a cool guy gary king never wrong yeah he's <laughs> never wrong he's never wrong and then we got uh nick frost plays andy from what uh uh gary says it it was he was his best friend but uh before the events of the movie gary got in a in a drunk driving accident and gave up Gave up alcohol. That's gonna come yeah, they, in later. Yeah, they they hadn't spoken like for like over. I think I think they say he hasn't drank in sixteen years. So you could you can they haven't spoken for at least sixteen years before the start of the movie. Yeah, you got old man. Old man, who yeah, doesn't want to be called by, old man anymore? <laughs> yeah, it's played by Martin Freeman. He's he's our favorite. Uh, he's our favorite guy from the MCU. <laughs> yeah, the 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 guy that's not Phil Coulson, <laughs> the other one. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, uh, Patty Con Con whatever the fuck. Uh, he plays Stephen, and and Stephen is uh, the he he's he's like the 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 ground for the uh, the friend group because they're all they're all married and everything. He, his life went to shit, uh, but not as much as as Gary. Gary's went to shit because he wanted it to to go like that. But, yeah, let me. We'll, we'll get to Gary when we just we run through the rest yeah. of the cast. Gary's Gary's compared to the rest of the cast is a different situation, right? Stephen was uh, Stephen got the short end of the stick because he he was trying to get with uh with Sam, who is it's it's Steve it's P Peter's, Peter's sister. sister Peter's yeah. sister. Played by uh, Rosamund Pike, uh, and then we the the last friend uh, is Peter, played by Eddie Marson. He's in Deadpool two, and that's all I know him yep. from. <laughs> now the, these uh, these five friends, when they were in high school, uh, they grew up in this small town. In this small town, there's twelve bars, twelve pubs, and this town has a tradition called the Golden Mile. Where you go to all twelve pubs in one night, and you you start at the first post and you end at a bar called the World's End. Yep. And uh, they tried doing it. One yep. of them didn't yep. make it past the fifth pub, and I think they stopped at the eighth pub, or like the ninth pub, or something like that. They yeah, they you didn't. It. They didn't make it to. I think that they made it to the ninth because ten is because uh, in this movie they have they have like a physical map. That they used in in high school, yeah, and, and they mark off the tenth pub, I believe, as like it's the first time where we're here. Cross the next on the maps. I'm, I'm pretty sure they did nine, but yeah, so, I, I don't remember. So then they, so then uh, they they live their lives. You know, they get married, get jobs, whatever. Life goes on. Twenty years later, Gary's like, you know what? Fuck it, let's try again. <laughs> it's important to to comment though that like life moved like after that night that they failed, life moved on for everybody. Except Gary King, uh, G Gary kind of never. I, I like to, to quote him in the movie. His, his that night was his peak. His life peaked there, and it was kind of downhill since then. Trying to relive that high, you know. The the, the movie opens with uh, him in an AA meeting, <laughs> and uh, and that's how we get here. Is at the, uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. They, they, some guys like, Are, aren't you? Aren't you sad you never finished the Golden Mile? The, the, the Golden Mile? You'd make it to the world's end, man. And then he does it. He, he tries to get all his friends. Like twenty years later, all of them have the completely separated themselves from that part of their life. And here comes Gary King with his trench coats and his his black hair, looking just like he did in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey guys, let's fucking do it." <laughs> They all go. They all, they all do it. Yeah, and they all do it. I don't know why. They they they, they don't really have a reason to to follow him. I, I think the reason might just be to relive the glory days, you know? Like like having one 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 night out with your buddies. I think it makes sense. Yeah, but they all they all hate Gary. They they all hate Gary, but like Gary's the glue that like keeps them all together, right? Like when they meet in this movie like at the, the train station, it's kind of implied that they all haven't talked to, they all haven't talked to each other. 
or at least like not really. You Whoa, know? What the? That was weird. You you made a you did yeah. a robot voice. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. Funny that it was a robot voice. Maybe <laughs> I was replaced. <laughs> yeah, maybe anyway, you just replaced. Um, maybe I was just replaced. But yeah, so like it's it's kind of implied that these guys haven't talked to each other at all since high school. So, like, may- maybe Gary showing up was like, oh, yeah, let's we, so we live the glory days for a night, you know? I haven't seen my, my friends, my, my quote-unquote best friends in 20 years. No, fuck it. Let's do it, right? Like, what's the worst that could happen? We're, we're responsible adults now, right? What can happen? What could go wrong? Everything. <laughs> so, they, they all get together, and they, they start doing this golden mile. Everything seems fine. You know, they, uh, uh, Andy orders water. And everybody, like, not ev- everybody else orders beer, and Gary's like, well, you fucking pussy, huh? You're ordering water. Because uh, he's like, I'm not here to drink. I'm just here to hang out. And uh, they, they realize that the, the, the town is not like it was before. Some The bars have all mostly been renovated. Uh, the first two bars look exactly the same. <laughs> and it's really funny. And it, it's the it's that, like, message from the movie that's like... Uh, what what what's what's the term they keep saying? Everything's being uh, starbucked. Everything's being starbucked. I think is what they uh, said. Yeah, I think that's right. Everything's becoming a Starbucks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everything's uh becoming the same. But the 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 people the people are acting weird because nobody recognizes them. Nobody's like, oh yeah, you're the you're those kids. But you know, it's probably because it was twenty years ago, and yeah, no I, one cares I, I think... about teenagers. Yeah, like like the reason obviously like it comes up later, but I, like in the moment, I think everyone like in the group aside from Gary King is is like, like yeah, dude, you're Gary King. You're not as important as you think you are, right? Like like you were a couple of guys who like just drank into teenager shit. Like people move on, right? And I mean, everybody moved on. The town moved on. The the group moved on, except except Gary. So I think that kind of drives him more to want to get this done to get to finish the Golden Mile. And, uh, and 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 that's that's what that's what they do. They they sure do finish. They... <laughs> I can't remember all the the bars. There was the the list. <sighs> well, do you want you want like the names of the yeah. yeah so I have them. Worlds. And... There is. Let's see. There's the first post. And the old familiar, the famous cock, the cross hands, the good companion, the trust, the trusty servant, two headed dog, the mermaid. Hold on. Or is uh, the yeah the mermaid the beehive the king's head, the hole in the wall which is probably the best bar, it, it always always the hole in the wall yeah and uh, and the world's end the last one the the actual like the the designs of the bars are all like super cool they all look great I would totally hang out at the world's end it looks like a really fun place <laughs> before all of the destruction you know I'm sure it was a nice place yeah and, and, and like I like a lot of the um. Oh, well, not a lot of them, but like some of the, some of these names end up having like kind of funny meanings for the cast, right? Like, um, there's the the bar called the the famous cock is the one bar they get thrown out of. That's the one where where Gary drinks from like leftover beer outside. And it's called the famous cock, and that's the bar he got banned from because he was a when he was a drunken kid. So like he's the famous cock, haha. Yeah, the the first post was it, is, the, it's called that. Yeah, that's that's the first one, but it's also because uh, th- apparently that was the city's first post office. Uh, and then the old familiar is called that uh, because both bars look exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, and, like the good companion is, is the one. It's that's the the bar they go through after they learn what's going on in the town, and like they have to pretend uh, they have to pretend to be enjoying the golden mile where they're actually secretly like looking out for everybody and seeing who they can trust. Yeah, and and the sign for the good companion is is uh four blue faces and one golden face. Yeah. So the four blue faces are the people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the the, the quote unquote people. Uh the, the trusty servant is is when they they meet uh, Gary's old drug dealer friend who's like not like he's in on it but he's he's a human. He's like he's one of them. Yeah. You know. Uh, oh, and the, the, the cross hands, that's the one where they, they fight in the, uh, in the bathroom. So the cross hands, you know, like they were fighting, mm-hmm. uh, that, that was, that's before, uh, the good companions, uh, yeah, two, yeah, then... two headed dog. I don't know why it's called that. I, I wouldn't, I don't know. Uh, let me, is... oh, I'm, okay, wait, okay, wait, hold on. I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading it. The, 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 the two headed dog is where they fight the twins. 
Oh yeah. Oh okay. Look, there's a. Okay, this is, I'm reading this from a screen rant. Uh, apparently, there's apparently there being twins is like a like a motif in the Cornetto trilogy. Oh yeah. Okay, because there's a there's twin zombies in Shaun of the Dead. Uh, then there's Bill Bailey who plays two twins in Hot Fuzz. Uh, and then in the World's End, Sam meets up with two twins she used to be friends with in the Two Headed Dog. And then they attack her. Yeah. Uh, then the mermaid is not a pub; it's a club. I don't know why that counts. Well, it, it probably used to be the it used to be a bar, right? Then it became a club. Uh, and that and uh, the it's called the mermaid because, uh, in in like apparently according to Screen Rant, in like traditional stories, mermaids used to lure, lure sailors to their death, and that's what happens in the pub because uh, the marmalade Lloyd, sandwich. <laughs> Which is, uh, it's a red-headed two blondes that uh, <laughs> the gang all wanted to get with, and Gary did get with uh, back in the day, you know? Yeah. Uh, then the beehive is uh, when they, they meet up with uh, their old professor from school, and he's, it's a, it's a, what's his name? Uh, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Which is uh, really funny because uh, in in Hot Fuzz Timothy Dalton was in it and he was also James Bond, yeah. <laughs> so so that's pretty funny. Yeah, the the Beehive this is when they learn about the like the the, the whole idea of the of these the, the people. hive mind of of of, <laughs> um, of robots. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, then we got the King's Head. I, um, I don't know this one. I don't know this one. Uh, on the website it says uh, Gary King banged his head against the wall. <laughs> so sure. the King's Head. Uh, the hole in the wall is funny. It's a funny one because um, this this is the scene where the where they drive the car through the wall. To, yeah. To escape. Yeah. So they're a little hole in the wall. And also, uh, if I'm I'm gonna be nitpicky here. They didn't actually finish the uh, well. Well, they didn't finish the Golden Mile to begin with because he didn't end up getting a drink at the World's End. But he didn't drink at the King's Head either. Yeah, he didn't drink at the King's Head or the hole in the wall. Like all three. The last three, he didn't drink at. I'm yeah, he sure. didn't drink at. Uh, so and then the world's end is called that because that's the end. <laughs> that's the end of the 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 golden mile, but it's also the world's end. It's also the world's end. Ah. We've been we've been uh, tiptoeing around it kind of, but uh, we did say earlier it's an apocalypse movie. Yeah, and uh, there's something weird happening in this town. Yeah. The the reason the reason uh, everyone seems weird is because most of the town. Has been replaced by robots, robot aliens. <laughs> yeah, robot aliens, except for like a handful of people. And there's like three in the end who weren't replaced, but they they know what's going on and they just go along with it. Like they just like so they don't die, right? So they, like, like, yep, we'll, we'll we'll go along with you, robots. Because if you if you don't go along with them, they replace you. Yeah. So the the these these aliens they they invaded Earth not just in this town like they they planted themselves their hive mind and they planted themselves in random spots around the Earth. This town happened to be one of them, and they they were like go they would go around and ask people if they want to be part of their conglomerate, part of their hive mind, and if you if you accepted then you joined the hive mind and you wouldn't be replaced, and if you didn't accept. They would kill you, replace you with a robot, a robot replica, which would be part of the hive mind. Uh, but the replica would not be able to replicate, uh, would not be able to replicate like stuff that was added to you after your. Uh... Holy shit! It's like the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not able to replicate like things that changed about you after they got your DNA, which is from the town. So like. They have the DNA of the gang, okay, and we, we know this because two of them end up getting uh, replaced. But like when Old Man is replaced, they're, they're not like they're able to replicate him with the the scar. That the, that's why he's named Old Man. He's named after that because of his scar. But like later in life, he got the scar removed like surgically. But the robots can't copy that, so he still has the scar as an adult when he's replaced. And that's how um, Andy figures out that he that something is wrong with him because he notices the the scar. Yeah. And also, you know, you're replaced by a robot when you're overly happy. <laughs> yeah, like if you've uh, if if you like have like no 
real semblance of what's really happening. Like, like you're like, oh, man, we'll just, we got to get the fuck out of here. There's people trying to kill us. And if you're like, no, no, this, no, we're fine. Come on, let's finish the Golden Mile. Let's do it. Come on. You're a fucking replacement. I'm going to shoot you. Yep. And they, they have the, they have like blue blood. Now they, yeah, they, they call they call them blanks. The 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 way they try to figure out who's a blank and who's not, they I feel like they have a really simple way of doing it. They're in a bar and there's glass everywhere. Like if they if like if they just break a glass and then like put a, like cut a little bit of their finger, if the blood is blue, you're not a human. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. I was thinking that the whole movie, why wouldn't they do that? But I guess they caught on really quickly that Oliver was uh, a blank. Yeah, like, like Nick, Nick Frost's character catches on immediately, basically. And, like, we, we go to the mermaid, and then after the mermaid, it's, it's revealed that he's he's a blank. Yeah, and actually, uh, Nick Frost catching on early is a motif throughout the whole Cornetto trilogy. Like the like in in Shaun of the Dead, he's like something weird is happening. I don't know. There's pe- people are acting weird, and in the in the in Hot Fuzz, he's suspecting his father before everything even starts. And in this movie, he's like Oliver is acting a bit weird. I don't know what's going on. The town has changed. He's the smartest character in these movies. Yep, but uh, I don't know. Gary's never wrong. So if Gary's okay, it's okay. <laughs> We we didn't we didn't get into it, but like the but just to put it out there, the, the goal of these this alien robot overlord is to create a perfect like society in the universe, basically. Like 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 they've been replacing people all across the galaxy too, like other aliens and shit with with their hive mind, and they're just trying to create a perfect society where everyone is 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 happy and on the same page and and, and blah blah blah. Yeah, and they came to Earth where we're, we're a bunch of fuck ups. That'll come up later. Yeah, they they were they were, they basically just try to take over the whole universe is what they're trying to do and and get everybody to follow their laws and stuff whatever, like making like a galactic federation, empire whatever. But anyways, uh, all of this is just the backdrop for for Gary's stupid fucking uh stupid fucking brain, because he just he's just doesn't care. He's just trying to do the golden mile. He doesn't even care if if some of his friends get lost along the way. His whole goal is just to finish this golden mile and uh, get a drink at every pub. Yeah, basically. Like, like he's revealed later that um, like I, we know Gary's an AA because that's how the movie starts, and you know that he, he clearly has a substance abuse problem. And it's later just straight up said that like he has nothing left to live for. Basically, like like Gary King was all about doing what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it, living his life to the fullest. And since he was put into AA and, and became an addict, he, he doesn't have control anymore. To, to quote him, they tell him when to go to sleep. You know, and so, like, that's, like, his way of just like, spelling it out to the audience. Like, he has no control anymore. You know, he has to follow life by a schedule, and he's not happy. And, like, the golden mile and, and drinking is all he has left. So that's why he's so uh, so dead set. It's uh, it's it's sad. That seems really like like it's like it's, it's him arguing with Nick Frost, who was supposed to be or supposedly his best friend, but they they took two very different paths in life, and they're both kind of unhappy. And it's a really sad scene with them arguing, and and, and yeah, I, I felt it. I got a little a little yeah. emotional. It's a it's not a happy story. It's 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 a story about you know substance abuse and like never growing out, uh, growing up, uh, never never really like starting adulthood. He's always his brain has always been in that teenage mindset of just partying and doing whatever he wants whenever he wants. That's not how the world works, you know. Yeah, that's you know, and maybe in this ideal society that the robots we're gonna create that would be the case and and they even have like a, a replacement of gary king like as a as a like 18 year old or as a 20 year old but, and he could have lived a life just being able to do what he wanted <laughs> the thing with that is when you're a replacement you're, you're you're a slave to that system too so the only the only freedom you have is to rebel in this case right so, yep rebel against uh the robots against his AA people, which you shouldn't do, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. 
The only way for Gary King to rebel is is to is to fight. Yeah, and I, I think I think the ending for Gary is uh, is interesting. Like it, it kind of relates to that where he finds a purpose again. Oh yeah, we'll we'll talk about that we'll when get we get to later, the ending. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once once they all catch on about the robots and everything, obviously they're like, we gotta get out of here. Let's go home. And uh, at that point, all of them are pretty drunk, so none of them could drive. And they've already been uh, stopped by a cop earlier before they get to the town. Yeah, a cop who was replaced. Yeah, a cop who was replaced. So they they all turn they all turn to Andy because he hasn't been drinking all all night. Uh, but guess what? He just took like fifteen shots. <laughs> yeah, he gives in. He's like, "This is this is crazy. I'm just gonna drink." <laughs> you know what? When I while we were watching this at first. I was thinking that uh, they would all think that Gary is crazy and all this, and uh, that this was just a weird drug trip that only Gary was experiencing, and everybody else was like, dude, you're fucking crazy. Well, but no, it was real. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was, was real. real. Because uh, at at um, the third bar at uh, the Crossed Hands, is that what it was called? I already forgot. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, at uh, scrolling, yeah, the, cro- the, cro- the cross hands. Yeah, yeah, it's the fourth. It's the fourth one. The fourth bar, at the cross hands, uh, when he goes to the bathroom and and there's that really cool fight scene with the the teenagers as their first encounter with the robots. I th- I thought uh, right before he went to use the urinal, he uh, he started cocaine because it, it's they 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 uh they reference him being uh, addicted to cocaine throughout the whole movie. So I, I thought this was just one a really weird drug trip at first, but no, it was real. Yeah, and, and, and he does like they, they, when they meet their old drug dealer friend, they, he does say like, "I'm gonna go talk to him to see if he's, you know, if he's he's one of them or buy drugs." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, and their 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 uh their drug dealer friend, his name is uh Basil. He's hilarious. Uh, he was in, he was in uh, uh Hot Fuzz. I forgot who he was though. Oh, oh he was the the. The guy they couldn't understand, the guy who had the bomb in his shed. He's also in uh, he's in that, uh, that 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 franchise of movies I still haven't finished. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in and he's in Captain America. <laughs> he's in that and Captain America. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it, but it's a touchy subject, so I'm not going. Yeah, to. and he's also Geppetto in in the Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio movie. Yeah, I did, I did not know that until I, I opened the letterbox page. I need to watch <laughs> that. You watched that yesterday. I need to. Watch I did. I watched. Movie. I watched it yesterday. Uh, we I might. We, we might talk about it on our Oscars episode. Yep. We we just might. I, I mean, I'm I'm gonna, I'm planning to watch it soon. He's in Doctor Who. Who? Who's he playing? Okay, we're getting we're getting uh out of. Oh, he's the, he's the first Doctor. David Bradley. Yeah, well, he plays the first Doctor in in the Christmas special. Yeah, because that doesn't make sense. He can't be uh, the first Doctor. Yeah, uh, yeah but... he he's recasted as the first Doctor in in the two Christmas, the two recent Christmas specials. All right, all right, all right. We're, the world's end. We're talking about the world's end. <laughs> that was a rabbit hole. I apologize. <laughs> the David Bradley rabbit hole. This is gonna be like the Dune episode. Come on, we gotta stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh basil guy he accepted into the hive mind so he wasn't replaced um he becomes a very important character later because he he's he joins uh the fan i was gonna say fantastic five that's the wrong joke the, <laughs> the five musketeers he's he joins the five musketeers in their battle for for revolution, <laughs> yeah. he's also the one that that tells Stephen Stephen like everything. At the mermaid, he like takes Stephen aside and like literally, literally just tells him everything. Well, by that by that point, they're the they're the the four musketeers. <laughs> but, uh... Oh yeah, by that point, they're the four musketeers, but you don't know it yet. <laughs> so yeah, one one by one, uh, they start dying. So all, Oliver got replaced. Oh man, got replaced, and they found out, uh, and they took care of him. <laughs> Oh, uh, at um, what was the bar where they killed him? At uh, at the trusty servant, wasn't it? Where they kill him? Uh, all of oh no no, it was at the beehive where they kill him. Yeah, yeah. they kill him at the beehive. Uh, and then on from the beehive on their way to the king's head. Uh, in a, in a really really funny scene because they 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 all decide even Gary decides okay we have to stop we have to go so like they they oh we forgot to talk about Sam so Sam uh Gary actually sends Sam away. 
at one point like because she she didn't drink so she's like here's like get, get in your car get the fuck out yeah like leave <laughs> like it's, it's dangerous leave get help whatever uh, you know uh she she doesn't come back until later but then everyone else is like okay we got to find our own way out because stupid gary sent her away without anybody else <laughs> so so uh they were like okay we gotta get to the beast yeah the, the beast is uh gary's car quote-unquote gary's car quote-unquote gary's car because it's actually under oliver's name because <laughs> uh, he sold it to a, him he sold it to him in the 80s but they never actually like changed the the name on the papers <laughs> um so then they get they get to the beast but uh their way there is blocked by the king's head <laughs> Like they're trying to get away from the Golden Mile, but on the way to get back to to leave, they have to go through the King's Head. So obviously Gary's like, okay, the the Golden Mile's back on. We're trying this again. Uh, he doesn't end up getting um getting the drink. Uh, so the Golden Mile is already broken. Uh, but at that point, uh, yeah, it's more about surviving. <laughs> yeah, at that, that point it's more about surviving. So once they leave the King's Head, they lose Peter on the way. Um. Peter, yeah, yeah, Peter, that was his name. They lose Peter on the way. He gets br br uh, brutally murdered by, <laughs> by the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now it's actually just the Three Musketeers. <laughs> and yeah, it, it, com it comes around. They're the Three Musketeers. Yeah, just like every Edgar Wright movie. It all comes full circle. Uh, then they, they make it to the hole in the wall where Sam comes... Uh, no, 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 Sam doesn't come back with the car. Steve comes back with the car. Yeah. Uh, but the the car gets destroyed, <laughs> and then um, they make it to the world's end. Yeah, um, yeah, they they run to the world's end. <laughs> so yeah. Like they they run across like a wave of then of enemies. It's, it's it's funny. They finally make it to the world's end, uh, and this is like the base of operations for for the aliens. <laughs> so they find like the secret room. To get inside the secret lair of the aliens. And this is where, like, the main hive mind explains the whole purpose of everything. Yeah, you get, like, the rundown of their plan. It's, uh, it's what we said earlier, you know, it's just... We're gonna make this perfect society. and You, you guys are never gonna have to think or be stressed or have a bad day ever again. Because it's gonna be perfect. But you'll have no control. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of, of the the thing uh it's called the network it's uh what's i just had him there it is bill bill nighy i don't know it's it's n i g h y i don't know how to say that but he's in every uh Edgar Wright movie so that's that's cool oh, is he? I, who, I didn't know that yeah in hot fuzz in hot fuzz he was philip i don't remember who philip is <laughs> it was a while yeah. ago since we watched it and in I mean, not not in on Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. He was Philip in Hot Fuzz. He was Sergeant Turner. Okay. No, that was Bill Bailey. Sorry, that's a different Bill. <laughs> Bill he was uh, no. <laughs> he was the chief inspector. Okay. Bill Nye, the science guy. He was also in Detective Pikachu. <laughs> and we saw a lot of we saw a lot of actors in from Detective Pikachu in movies recently, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about that movie later? <laughs> yeah, we can talk we can get into it briefly because we're not doing an episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's like, no, we're not joining your hive mind. And they fucking, they, they convince the network that humans aren't even worth it. <laughs> because humans are the most fucking uh, stubborn living beings in the universe. My, my, favorite, my favorite line in this movie is fucking... Uh... It's just, it's Gary King just drunk off his ass. It's like, it's our basic human right to be fuck-ups. <laughs> it's so funny. And the, the network, he's been, like, talking really nice and, like, you know, very articulately. And at the end, he's just like, fuck it. And he gives up. He leaves. Fuck it and leaves. <laughs> um, but when he left... Uh, he was angry. He was very angry. So he blew up every single electronic device on Earth, which basically means he destroyed the world. <laughs> yeah, we're right back to the Stone Age. And uh, that's that's uh, that's how the movie ends. Uh, we got like this little montage of where are they now? Like what happened to everybody after uh, 
after after Armageddon, basically after the world's end. So eventually, the blanks came back to life just on their own, uh, and they just started living normal lives alongside humans, kind of like what happened at the end of Shaun of the Dead. Oh yeah, you know you're right. Yeah, yeah. That happens. And uh, what happened with with Gary is he basically became Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, he goes around with like a team, a squad of 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 blanks. <laughs> and he he finally found his purpose in life is is he doesn't need to drink he just he just wanted an adventure to match the golden mile and he found it yeah and again we come full circle in the ending again because Gary King goes to a bar in uh, I'm just gonna call it the wasteland and he orders a water well f- four waters five waters I don't whatever an amount of waters he orders <laughs> waters is the point because you know. He's he left alcohol behind him because now he has a purpose again. Yep. It's to run with a sword and 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 kill people. <laughs> Want to get in the way of his adventure? Uh, the the ending is is a pretty controversial part of this movie because not everybody is, not everybody likes it. Not everybody likes this movie to begin with. I think it's the weakest Cornetto tri- of the Cornetto trilogy. I think so too. I I also think it's the weakest of the Cornetto trilogy. It doesn't mean it's a bad movie though. Yeah, it's not bad. I also think it's Edgar Wright's weakest movie of his like of the popular ones. Like of the big ones, I think it's the weakest one. I thought you said Baby Driver was his weakest movie. Have you come around? <laughs> I think I've come around. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I I remember like both, the- both are both are really good. I like both a lot. I I think this one is back at the bottom though. And this is me saying that after saying I, I did enjoy it more on this revisit than I remember enjoying it the first time. But yeah, I think I think this is his worst. Uh, or I'm not going to say worst. Least good. His <laughs> least good popular movie because, you know, there's still Grindhouse and the Sparks Brothers and uh, Fistful of Fingers. Those are not like the super popular ones. We might still watch them, though. Oh yeah, I, I, I do want to watch Grindhouse. It's a four-hour-long movie, so so that's good. <laughs> we we will, I guess we we've already like hinted at it a bunch, but I guess we'll finally come out and say it. We are gonna do episodes on every Edgar Wright movie. Uh, so the marathon isn't technically over, but the Cornetto trilogy. The Cornetto is trilogy is over. Yeah, I like. Edgar Wright's my favorite director in Hollywood right now, so I'm I'm in the on next is Scott Pilgrim, I think. So that's gonna be exciting to talk about, I think. Yeah, it should should be noted that uh, Scott Pilgrim came out before the the World's End, but we wanted to finish up the Cornetto trilogy first before moving on. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I gave this we didn't talk about our ratings. I gave it uh three and a half stars. I also gave it three and a half stars. I think that that's the same score I gave Baby Driver. So like they're they're, they're they're like they're like comparable. I, I like them both, but I think something it's a situation where like something has to be at the bottom, right? Yeah, it's it's like that for me. For me, it's Scott Pilgrim. I think that's the bottom one. That's fair. Uh, I think Baby Driver is his best movie. I have that's one of my five star movies. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, we've, we've talked about it at, at length off camera, but yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, can't wait to do an episode on that. Uh, but that's gonna be in a while. <laughs> Baby Driver is going to be a fun one for sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, just talking about the music in that movie is going to be fun. Uh, but do you have anything else to add to The World's End? Not really. I think this movie is a lot of fun. I think I think definitely like compared to some some other things I've watched recently. Like Just like if I could think back on the stuff I've watched recently, it's probably the m- most fun I've had just yeah, sitting me- down and watching a movie. Yeah, me too. Which, which is nice because, you know, enjoying movies is nice. Yeah, you know they're meant to be enjoyed, right? <laughs> so yeah, they're me- they're meant to be, and and unlike something I watched recently that that wasn't good, this one was was fun. That was good. Yeah, we could talk about that briefly. Um, sure. You want you want to do that now? Uh, and we're done with hot fuzz. Uh, no, hot fuzz. We're done <laughs> with the world's end. I mean, yeah, we're we're pretty much done with the world's end. I mean, it's 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 a short movie. It's a comedy, so there's not a lot to talk about. But uh, if you haven't seen it, it's still a worth watch. If you haven't seen the Cornetto trilogy, that's a fun marathon to go through. Those three movies are all hilarious. They're all good. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good, this is a good end to the Cornetto trilogy. I'm going to miss it. Definitely. It's definitely a good conclusion. I'm going to miss it. Same. Well, 
Uh, moving on to a little bit of TV show stuff going on. The Last of Us is still happening, and it's still good. We have two more episodes of The Last of Us under our belt. We have another episode airing uh, tonight after the recording, but we're recording now, so... Yeah. 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 Uh, Schedules be damned. Yeah. Uh, Last of Us is fantastic. Yeah, uh, the last two episodes... Shocker, I know. It continues (laughs) to be... It continues to be fantastic. Um, it, it's it's becoming one of my favorite TV shows, actually, and it's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, it, it it might go up there. Yeah, I don't. It's not going to beat The Office, but it's 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 no, going. It's, it's not going to. It's not going to ever be number one. But it's it's like on my list, which is insane because like, I watch a lot of TV. I wish it was a letterbox for TV shows. I wish TV shows were on letterboxed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the Last of Us. Uh, the last two episodes. We're both really, really, really good. Remind me, it was the one with... It's, it's the the one where they... I, I remember what the last episode was, but the one before that was the one with the, the two, brothers, two brothers, right? The two brothers and then Tommy. I've, we didn't talk about that in the last episode? The two brothers? No. Okay, I thought we did. Wait, did we? You might have. Well, okay, just in case we didn't, the episode with the two brothers, so good, it might be better than the game. Yeah, I agree. Than that portion of the game. Uh, but anyways, um, the next uh, the next episode after that was another like video gamey part, because uh, it, it's a uh, Joel gets kind of fucked up, uh, and then you play as Ellie for a while, uh, and right before that, because they infiltrate this base and there's a lot of fighting and gunplay going on. It's a like video game part, you know. There's there's gameplay happening, and again they translate that into a TV show really really well, just like the, what they did with episode three. It was so good. This show is so good. It, this show continues to be like, uh, like, like uh, fantastic, and and I, 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 I'm just, I'm so happy with it. I'm happy to say we have a good adaptation. We have, a, we have good TV. Like, it's not even just a good video game adaptation. I've, I've said this every time we talked about The Last of Us, but it's just genuinely good television. Yeah, this is probably the best. Like, this has to be the best video game adaptation I've ever seen. Oh yeah, no, no, bar none. Like, like, it, it is the best. Like the only things that come close are like Arcane and and Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Yeah, Arcane, Arcane's really good. Uh, Edge Runners is 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 really good. And this is really good. Like the but the Last of Us is the but, but best. Like, but like Arcane and Edge Runners aren't. Ad- I mean, they're, they're based on games, but they're not adaptations, right? Like yeah, that's true. Well, the the Game Awards counts them as adaptations. Yeah, I guess. But like they're 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 in you know. But this is actually a. Straight adaptation. Oh well, yeah, speaking of the Game Awards, this is probably going to win Best Adaptation at the Game Awards for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. For it sure. has to, for sure. Uh, that or the Mario movie, <laughs> if it ends up being really good. I don't know, yeah, let's hope. Let's hope it's really good. It looks really good. It does, actually. It does. If you want to, if you want to hear our thoughts on that, we're we're definitely going to be covering it. Maybe with uh, maybe with some guests. Ooh, Ooh we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's 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 uh, our update on the Last of Us. Moving on to Backlogged, the same where we recommend each other movies to talk about in the next episode. Uh, last episode, I recommended Pat Angry B- the Angry Birds movie 2 because I wanted him to suffer. Do I have to? Well, yeah. I have to talk about it. I, I, I did watch it. You have a legal obligation to talk about it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I did watch it. So how was it? <laughs> it was bad. But it was less bad than the other one. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I stand by this. I will die on this hill. That if if this movie was anything other than Angry Birds, it would be hilarious. I don't know about hilarious, but I, but, yeah, I don't know. If, the, if it was like like original characters and it had nothing to do with Angry Birds, people would give this like three and a half stars. But but I, I have a feeling, like, the only reason people are giving this less than two and a half is because it's a sequel to the Angry Birds movie. And the Angry Birds movie was really bad. But I think this this movie is really funny. I like it a lot. I quote it sometimes. It's funny. It's a funny movie. Funny is, uh, is a word. I gave it three stars. I gave it, like, two or two and a half. See? I don't know if I enjoyed it. But I didn't hate it either. I enjoyed that, this movie. I like it. That, that's about all you're getting out of me for that. Yeah. I think it is not a complete waste of time. <laughs> it, 
Angry Birds 2, not a complete waste of time. <laughs> Are there better uses of your time? Yes. Yeah, but I'd I'd rather watch this over Ant-Man again. Uh, no, no, I nah, actually yeah, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would. I'm happy for you for feeling that way. But I don't agree. <laughs> Well, you have to recommend me something. So, I you know I, I actually there's something on your I, I, on your list that, that that really like stuck out to me actually. It's a, it's it's a it's a dumb movie that I have a weird history with. But uh, Lib, you uh, you haven't seen Superbad. I haven't seen Superbad. You're gonna watch Superbad. I'm gonna watch Superbad. Yeah, and maybe we could watch Superbad together because I I love this movie. <laughs> I gave this movie five stars. It, it it is a shit post five stars, but five stars nonetheless. Is this su- is the movie super bad? No, no, it's good. Yeah. It's, I like. I, I do like it. I'm so funny. I must, see how I didn't acknowledge you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we're gonna talk about super bad. I've I've this movie has a reputation. Can we talk about it on this show? <laughs> super bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Isn't there shit in this movie? Yeah, but this is a lot of sex and drugs and stuff. We can touch on that. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, uh, we don't anger the uh, the internet gods by no, talking about f- super bad. No, it will be fine. <laughs> uh, but but uh, yeah, that that's interesting. Good pick, and uh, that's gonna be it for today's episode. Oh, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, and make sure to tune in next episode because that's gonna be a good one. Because we're talking about Creed Three. Yep, it's time. We're coming back to Rocky. Is uh, our whole marathon was was leading into Creed Three. Yeah, that's the whole reason we did this, and that's the whole reason the show exists is to talk about Creed Three. <laughs> the podcast exists because Creed Three exists. <laughs> Make sure to uh, tune in to hear us talk about Creed Three, and uh, to do that, all you got to do is follow us on Spotify or subscribe to us on YouTube or your fa- anywhere. Follow us on your favorite podcast app so that you never miss an episode uh, when we upload one. Also, make sure to check out the link tree, linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel. No spaces, no caps. There you'll also find a form to fill out uh, that you could fill out to recommend us a movie or a TV show. And then we'll make an episode about it. Also on the link tree, you could find our socials. Uh, such as Twitter and or Instagram. I think that's what the kids use these days. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we don't have a TikTok. Yeah. Do you know how to use TikTok? Because I don't. No, not really, kind of. But... We'll look into it. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be it. Uh, so we will see all of you in a theory. In a th- n- 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 bye. Bye-bye. <laughs><laughs> okay, so the thing I want to talk about was I really, I really wish Kirby's Return to Dream Land, whatever remaster, had it online because I really want to buy it. I really want to play it, but like, it's ninety dollars, right? <laughs> For Is a it- game I already have on my shelf behind me on the Wii. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and if it had multiplayer, like online multiplayer, that would have been enough for me to justify the purchase, right? But it doesn't, so it doesn't. That's all I have to say. Well, yeah. I'm sad. Because I want to enjoy Kirby. And I might still buy it at some point, but like not right now. I might get it. It's a really... Like, if you've never played Return to Dream Land, it's a really, really good Kirby game. It's a really solid Kirby game. One of the better ones. The only Kirby game I've ever played uh, was uh, Air Ride. Only Kirby game I've ever played. Yeah, Return to Dream Land is really good. It's in my top 100. Are uh, we good? Uh, yeah. <laughs>